Hello there and welcome to our screencast. Today I'd like to show you how to implement the live form Ajax design pattern using the Infragistics controls. Now to give you an idea of how this might look, let's just say you come up with a page and it looks like it's pretty well read only. But as you begin to hover over items within the page, you realize that um, it looks like you can interact with them. So if I come in here and, and click on this item, you'll notice that the, the border changed and I can highlight and edit the, the content within this control. So if I just uh, change something that's in here and mouse out of the control, you'll notice it updates again. Um, it's got that pink border and the, the grayed out text. And then as soon as our changes have, have, have been submitted, uh, it goes back to the, the, the UI of an unaltered state. So what happened there was uh, as, we, as we clicked out of that, that control, there was an Ajax request that went back to the server and updated our, uh, our data and persisted our changes. And, and that was all done without any sort of explicit submission of data. We didn't click on any buttons. We didn't uh, click on a, a next button. It was, it was all done in, in a sort of live type of format. That's what gives the, the pattern its name, the live form. So if I were to refresh my page, we can see that it has been persisted, the, the data is there. And also there, there's a, a different way of, of dealing with some of these controls. This, what you see right here, this item, this control is an, an input. It's a text box um, that's been styled to look read only in the beginning. Some of the other controls, that's not exactly the type of experience you want. So we have a span here and once you click on that span, uh, we hide it and then show uh, a web date chooser control which allows you to change the date here using the same type of approach that we've, we've gotten. We can refresh to see that it has been persistent, the, the changes to our data. So that's the demo. Uh, let's go ahead and get started and show you how to build it. Okay, well to kick things off, what I'd like to do is begin by implementing the title editor. And so there's a couple things that we need on the page. First of all, we're going to need a script manager. And this is necessary for a couple reasons. Number one, um, doing anything Ajax uh, in ASP.NET, if you're going to use the stock controls, um, you pretty much need a script manager for, for about anything that you're going to do. Um, but also what we'll be doing is taking advantage of the page methods. And so that'll allow us to write some code in the code behind and uh, expose it up to the client and allow that to be callable through Ajax. So we're going to say enable page methods and set that equal to true. Next what we'll do is uh, create a hidden input form. And what this will do is, is basically act as a container for the primary key for any one of the, the items that we're looking at. Um, so this is just an easy way to set aside the primary key value, even though we're not going to show it to the user, but have a place to put it. So we'll stick it in an input control, and the type will be hidden. And uh, the ID will be book ID. And the value uh, we'll, we'll get at in, in just a moment. Okay, so then the next thing that we need is the, our actual text box itself. And so we'll use the, the web text edit control. So let's go ahead and get one of those and, and bring it onto the page here. So I'm using Net Advantage 2008 Volume 3. And we need the web text edit. Here we go. Drag that on there. And then what I'm going to do for right now is just stick this within the div tag so it has its own. Um, has its own space on the screen, it's its own uh, blocking. So the ID for this will just be text title and then we're going to do a couple things here. Uh, I'm going to clean up the markup by getting rid of the end tag and have it self-closing because uh, I like my markup to be really nice and terse. And then what we'll do is we'll implement some JavaScript um, functions in order to give it the interaction that we want. So on focus, we will run txt title focus of all things. Uh, on blur, it would be basically the same thing. And on click. Something familiar. 
Okay, so what I'm doing is creating pointers to JavaScript functions that we'll implement in a moment that will allow us to have the, the kind of interaction you saw in the demo. So the next thing, the, the last thing that I want to do is just give this a width. And um, for right now, we'll just say it's uh, 800 pixels. Okay. Now I'm going to type just about all the code that's necessary in order to make this happen, except for one section, and that is the style sheet, just because um, th there's a little bit here, and I'll go through each one, um, but I don't think seeing me type it and explain line by line is, is necessarily um, all that interesting. So we're styling the body. All we're doing basically is, is giving um, giving it a font, uh, some size, and some margin. It's just basically some basic stuff to make things look good. Um, we're, we have a, a, a published label. If you remember, it, it showed uh, the Craig's book, and then it said published, and then the date after that, this label just this uh, ID here will place that label in the right spot. The date and date control gives us uh, some styling for where the, the, the data itself is, the one that you click on, and also the, the web date chooser that we're going to stick on there. Um, big is just a, a class to, to make the text bigger. Display none. This is something I'm you're constantly using um, when you want to hide and show things on the page. And then the progression for how our controls will go that's a little out of order but it'll go live input live edit and then live input dirty uh, live input edit I guess so basically when, when it's in an unaltered state you it's the the live input class is, is being applied to it then it'll go to live input edit and if you look at what's specific about this one we're basically going to stick a dashed border on there so people can tell you're in edit mode and then when we're in the dirty state what will happen is we're gonna put a, uh, a pink colored um, border around it and make the text uh, kind of a light gray just so people get an idea. So we're just setting up our initial border and in the text line. The reason initially we're setting the border to one pixel solid and then white is because if you have no border and then stick a border on there, things will start to move around. So in order so that doesn't happen, um, we're going to have a white border on there and then when you hover over it, it'll turn green and um, when you're uh, editing it, it will turn dashed to kind of a gray color, and then finally, once it's dirty and, and you're submitting the changes to the server, it'll be a pink, and we're changing the text to um, just a, a regular uh, light, light gray type of color. So that's the style sheet. So now that we have the style sheet, then the next part that that makes sense to to go in is start putting in some of um, the the JavaScript. So we'll open up a text block here. And we're going to start by adding in some functions that are kind of helper functions to make everything happen. So kind of in the spirit of jQuery, what I wanted to do is have some functions that allow us to add CSS classes and remove them. So we'll create the first one here, and we'll call this add CSS class. And we'll pass into it uh, a control and also the CSS name. So this is a class name, basically. So this one's pretty easy. Basically, to add the CSS class, all we need to do is, is look at the, the control itself and um, basically append the, the class name that we stick on there. So let's declare a variable C. And what we're doing here, we're going to take a look at the control. I'm going to spell my variable name up here. OK. So we're going to take a look at the control. And we want to take a look and see if it has the element. Now this is something that's specific to our Infragistix uh, client-side object model. Um, if we're, we're looking at an Infragistix control, we want to look at the element and its uh, class name. Otherwise, if it's something that we've done for, um, you know, a dollar sign get or get element by ID, we won't need that. So, if we have uh, control dot element, then we'll return uh, CTL element. Otherwise, we'll just return the control itself. Okay. And then at that point, what we can do is we'll take a look at the class name. And uh, we'll just append what we've got here. We'll stick some spacing in there. Because of the way CSS works is that if you have multiple classes, you have to separate them by the space. And then we're going to stick a space on both ends so that depending on whether it's the first one you add or the second one or whatever, you, you get the, the correct spacing. 